Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Starting in QuickBooks 2006, you can perform all activities associated with your customers through the Customer Center. For users upgrading from QuickBooks 2005, you will find that this is where the information that used to be stored in your old customer job list is moved. While there are a great many features in the Customer Center, one of the most important parts of it is the Customers and Jobs tab. This tab is where you add, edit, and display all of your customers' information and information for any jobs that you create for each customer if used. You may notice that this list is sometimes called the Customers and Jobs tab within the Customer Center and called the Customer Job List in Forms. Sometimes it's simply called the Customers List. It really doesn't matter what you call it as long as you realize that it's all the same list. If you've created a new company file in QuickBooks 2006 through 2011 and you have customers who owed you money as of your company file's start date, then you should add those people to the customers and jobs list immediately after you finish the Easy Step interview. After that has been accomplished, you can then add customers and jobs to your list as the need arises through the daily use of the program. To add a new customer to the Customers and Jobs tab, you first need to open the Customer Center. You can do this by clicking the Customer Center button in the QuickBooks toolbar, by clicking the Customers button in the home page, or by selecting Customers and then choosing the Customer Center command from the menu bar. Also, if you memorize the old keyboard shortcut for the Customer Job list, which is Control plus J on your keyboard, you can now use that shortcut to open the Customer Center. At the left side of the Customer Center is a tab called Customers and Jobs. Click this tab to view customers and jobs that have been entered into the QuickBooks program. To add a new customer to this list, click the New Customer and Job button that appears above the Customers and Jobs tab at the top of the Customer Center window. From the small drop-down menu that appears, click the New Customer Choice. That will invoke the New Customer window where you can enter the new customer's information. In the New Customer window, begin by typing a name for the customer as you would like it to appear within the Customers and Jobs tab into the Customer Name text box. Note that each customer must have a unique customer name value. Now if you are adding a customer who owed you money as of the start date of your company file, then enter the amount owed by the customer as of the start date into the Opening Balance field. You then select the start date of your company file from the As of Calendar dropdown. These fields are only used when adding customers who owed you money as of your start date. For any future customers that you add, you will skip these two fields. Next click the Address Info tab. Here you will enter the customer address information as you would like it to appear on invoices and other customer related documentation. Start by typing the name of the company, which can be different from the customer name value, into the company name field. Now if the customer is an individual, you can then enter the name of the person into the Mr. Ms, first name, middle initial, and last name fields that are available. You can then enter any contact information that you want into the contact, phone, fax, alternate phone, alternate contact, email, and CC fields as desired. Then in the addresses section, you can enter billing and shipping information for the customer. You can type the customer's billing address into the bill to text box or click the edit button below the Bill To box and then enter the billing address into the Edit Address Information window. If you open the Edit Address Information window, click the OK button to close it. Now if the shipping address is the same as the billing address that you entered, then just click the Copy button to copy the billing information to the Ship To text box. 
Now in QuickBooks 2006 through 2011, you can create and save multiple shipping addresses for each customer. You can add a shipping address by clicking the Add New button that appears below the Ship To text box. In the Add Shipping Address Information dialog box, you would then enter a name for the shipping address into the Address Name text box. Next, type the address into the address, city, state province, zip postal code, and country region text boxes. If you are creating multiple addresses, check the default shipping address checkbox for the address that you want to be the default shipping address. When you're ready to save the address, simply click the OK button. You can then add more shipping addresses by repeating this process until you've entered all of the necessary shipping addresses for the selected customer. Now once you've entered the customer's address information, click the Additional Info tab to continue. Here you can use the Type drop-down to select a customer type from the drop-down that's available, or you can type a new customer type into the Type drop-down. The Customer Type field allows you to classify and categorize your customers as desired for reporting purposes. Next, use the Terms drop-down to select the default purchasing terms that you want to assign to the customer. You can then use the Rep drop-down to assign one of your sales reps to the customer if you use those. You can then select a default sending method for customer forms from the Preferred Send method drop-down. Next, in the Sales Tax Information section, you can set sales tax information for the customer. You can use the Tax Code drop-down to choose whether the selected customer is taxable or non-taxable. If the customer is a taxable customer, then choose the Sales Tax to Apply to Purchases from the Tax Item drop-down. Now we will look at collecting sales tax in a separate chapter, which you should review if you will be collecting sales tax. Now if the customer has a resale number for use, then you can enter it into the resale number text box. If the customer has a special pricing level that's assigned to purchases by default, select it from the price level drop-down. Now after the pricing levels, you can enter any information that you would like into the customer's custom fields that you have created. We will examine creating custom fields for customers, vendors, and employees in Lesson 310. You can click the Payment Info tab to enter default payment information for the new customer. You can enter a customer ID number or customer account number into the account number field. You also have the option to enter a credit limit on the customer's accounts receivable by entering the dollar limit into the credit limit text box. You use the preferred payment method section of this tab to set a default payment method that will appear when you receive payments from this customer in the future. If you want to set a default payment method, then you can choose one from the drop down at the top of this section. If you select a credit card type from this drop down, you can then enter the customer's cardholder information into the credit card number, expiration date, name on card, address, and zip code fields. Now if you are creating a new customer, then you're finished at this point. You won't use the Job Info tab, as that is only used when you are creating a new job for an existing customer. We will examine creating jobs in the chapter on estimates. For now, to add the customer to the list, just click the OK button. You can edit an existing customer's information in the future if their information changes or if you need to return to add more customer data. To edit a customer within the Customers and Jobs tab, first select the name of the customer in the list whose information you wish to edit. You can either double click on the name of the customer in the Customers and Jobs tab Click the Edit Customer button that appears towards the upper right corner of the Customer Center, or you can select Edit from the menu bar, and then choose Edit Customer Job. 
Now in the Edit Customer window that appears, you can then edit any of the information shown in the three tabs of the window. Once again, skip the job info. Then just click the OK button to save your changes and close the window when you're finished. Now like accounts, once you've used a customer in a transaction, you can't delete them from the Customers and Jobs tab. Instead, you can inactivate customers that you will no longer need to view in order to hide them within the list. Please review Lesson 312 to learn how to activate and inactivate customers. Now, if you did, however, create a customer entry that you did not use in a transaction and you no longer need, you can delete it. You would do this by selecting the entry to delete from the list, and then choosing Edit from the menu bar, and then choosing the Delete Customer Job command. You then need to click the OK button in the confirmation message box that appears to permanently delete the selected customer entry. Now starting in QuickBooks 2011, you can click the Collection Center button within the Customer Center to open the Collection Center window where you can see Almost Due and Overdue customer invoices. If you click the Overdue tab, you can then click the Select and Send Email button to select customers to whom you wish to email a payment reminder. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.